Hello and welcome. It's Carnage. Today we're going to take a look at the Bone Brawler from Yokai and Fwoosh. Stick around. Every collection needs an articulated skeleton. Hello and welcome everyone. It's Carnage. And before we get started, I just wanted to make a comment about the audio. I realize it's a bit rough and we are working on getting that ironed out and smoothing that out. I really do appreciate all of the comments, good, bad, or ugly. And uh, I really do appreciate everyone who has subscribed and those folks who are sticking in. It's going to get better, I assure you folks. I am working on improving the audio quality as we speak, so please do hang in there with me. I really do appreciate it. We're taking a look today at the Bone Brawler that comes to us from Yokai and Fwoosh. And full disclosure, I purchased this one from Big Bad Toy Store. I know some people pre-ordered the uh, version with the Jack Lantern. This is not that version. Uh, this is the Bone Brawler. Again, I ordered this about two weeks ago from Big Bad Toy Store and had it in hand, uh, of course, less than a week later. $4 shipping, you really can't beat that. Uh, Fwoosh, of course, those of you uh, who might be familiar with that name, uh, it's probably because of the ninjas that uh, they produced. And I think a lot of folks were using their uh, white ninja as a stand-in for Storm Shadow for a long time until he finally arrived. And I know they also had uh, an array of various colored ninjas that folks were using for the red ninjas and uh, as well as a lot of other things. And uh, those looked really good, I think. So this comes to us from those good folks at Floosh. And uh, of course, I'm not familiar with Yokai, but if this is any indication, I probably should be. Uh, probably since Dr. Mindbender arrived in my collection, I have really felt the need to add a skeleton. Uh, whether it's a skeleton that would be just hanging in the corner uh, for general science reference purposes or a skeleton that might become animated somehow, I'd like to have the option. So I had been looking for something and I'd seen, uh, I won't even mention the name of the manufacturer because I'm not even sure, but there were various green skeletons and red ones and I really just wanted one that was a straight up bone color. I didn't want it to glow or do anything. Just wanted a articulated skeleton. So I saw this. Um, I did see the uh, crowdfund campaign for this and I just decided not to jump in on that but when I saw this was in stock at BBTS, I decided to go ahead and jump on it. And uh, I've had it now for about a week. I've been able to uh, get it in my hands and do some photography with it, do some posing with it, uh, swap out the hands. Let's go ahead and talk about the accessories here. So in addition to the head that he has, which has an articulated jaw, there are five additional heads here. So there's a basic skull that's not articulated. And then we have a sort of a, a slightly more evil looking skull. Just a bit more sinister. And then we have a very sinister demonic skull complete with fangs and horns and uh, this one I believe would be some sort of a um, ceremonial burial type uh, skull with a scroll in his mouth and uh, some type of um, metallic 
placeholders in his eye and he's also got some carving on his forehead that would be uh, certainly any type of um, skeleton that's going to be associated with the ninjas or anything like that that'd be the one you'd want to use and then there's this one and he's got his brain coming out the top of his head sorry guys he's got his brain showing this again a great piece for Dr. Mindbender, even uh, independent of the skeleton. So you have some really cool pieces here um, that hopefully don't go into your drawer. These are some great pieces that could be used wherever, whether it's Dr. Mindbender's lab. Certainly those dreadnoughts are going to have a couple of skulls sitting around in their spot. And uh, we have some hands here. We have two holding hands. Or they could also be fists for uh, for whatever a skeleton can do with a fist. I don't know. Uh, but those hands can be used to hold the knife and the sword that are included. And then we have just two. Uh, these are just more of a flat, a flat hand. Or they could even be... Uh, holding something that you'd put inside it. Um, you know, skeleton fingers are tiny and pretty tough to work with, so my hat's off to them for even attempting to get into the fingers there. And then we have a dagger and we have a sword, and those fit very well into the holding hands there. Uh, so you really do have quite a nice array of accessories. Let's go ahead and turn them around because the back is really in some ways more impressive than the front and I'm sure it's not going to be photographed nearly as often. As you can see the spine is highly detailed, the ribs are highly detailed, pelvis, uh, and he is articulated there uh, at the top of the pelvis and then he's articulated there at the bottom of the rib cage so you really do have some great possibilities uh, for posing him he again is articulated there at uh, at the knees and he feels really solid. I mean, it's, you know, it's a, just by virtue of being so thin, it's delicate, but it's really surprisingly sturdy. And you have articulation there. And the feet and that allows for some posing of course and then you do have the pegs there so that he can be placed on a stand so again as you can see here he's got articulation at the bottom of his rib cage and then he's got articulation at the top of his pelvis so you really do have a lot of possibilities to pose this guy. And uh, it's relatively easy to get him to stand, too, since there's not a whole lot of mass there. Uh, but as you can see, pretty easy to get him into uh, a number of interesting poses. And then, of course, a lot of times, if you're like me, and you just want a skeleton that's going to be lying there, not doing much of anything, other than just being a skeleton, uh, he does that pretty well, too. You may have to work a little bit to get him to lie flat onto the ground, but it really, really doesn't take much. 
This guy is very, very realistic. He's very articulated. Um, so I think I'm going to go ahead. I know he's actually sold out at the moment, so I can't get another one. But I uh, intend to get another one as soon as I can because I think two of these would be great. Whether you're doing a scene where they're uh, just in the background, again, a, just a pile of bones, or whether you're going to animate these guys and have them attacking somebody, they really are what the doctor ordered for my G.I. Joe Classified collection. So I'm going to give these a 10 of 10, and uh, I do hope you will subscribe. Hit the like button and hit the notification button if you like G.I. Joe Classified and 112 Photography. I hope you'll stick around. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, folks.